Hello, everyone, and welcome to Motion Builder VTM issue number three, sponsored by Kadara. My name is Jason Busby, also known as Buzz of 3dbuzz.com, and I'm sitting here tonight with Mr. Zach Parrish. Hey, Zach. How's it going? It's going pretty good. So this VTM has got an interesting lineup prepared. Zach will be the one hosting it tonight, hmm. and we're going to be talking about constraints. Constraints play a very vital role in the entire animation process, especially when you want your character to be interacting with various objects. And so what we've done in this case is we have created several props for our alien that you can see he is sporting for us right now. He's got the new fancy wrist computer, if you will, that he's currently using. He's got one heck of a helmet going on with a special eyepiece. He has got the new improved antenna on the top of the helmet. <laughs> Zach's over there with the mouse and we're out of sync here. Trying to keep up with what he's talking about. That's um, fine. We've also got the new sporty backpack on the back and the nice Super GX11 gun. So we've got all sorts of different things, and by the end Actually, of this... Actually, uh, this is the GX-12. Oh, we got the upgraded model? Yeah. Oh, just, sweet. Just letting you know. I didn't think we were going to get it before recording. I okay. know. So, uh, so anyways, what we're going to do before this VTM over is two things. One, we're going to teach you about constraints, which is in itself going to be quite interesting. And then we're going to go a step further, and we're going to show you how we can rig everything up on this character. And then, as a bonus at the end, what we're going to do is then animate the following little animation that Zach is about to show you. But I'm going to have Zach animate this live so that I get a lot of people out there that ask all the time, well, how do I go about actually animating something? I'm completely new to animation, and I've told you guys in the past many times that Motion Builder is an extremely powerful application. And this really goes to put it to the test by having Zach animate something that's a relatively sophisticated animation in a very short amount of time, and you can only really do it in Motion Builder because of the real-time feedback. Absolutely. So, Zach, I know right now that things are going to be slightly choppy because of recording and the frame rate and everything, but go ahead and try to drag through the timeline and kind of walk us through what we're going to be looking at. All right, well, what we've got when we start out with this animation is our little alien guy is going to be sitting here kind of punching the buttons on his little wrist computer. And he's going to see something off to the side. He's going to look at it, try to focus on it, get startled, and pull his pistol on. Okay. So now, as far as constraints go in this little bit of an animation that's going on right here, it's more than just him picking something up, and it's more than just those pieces being constrained to his body. We've got the antenna flopping around up on top. Absolutely. We've also got the microphone. It may be a little bit hard for our viewers to see after this video is shrunk down, but the microphone is moving around as well. Right. And then, of course, the alien is actually interacting with the object, the gun, pulling it from the holster and picking it up. And some of the wobbling is actually going to be a little rough to see because even as I do it, it's, uh, it's actually updating in the viewport. Even like if we stop the motion, like if he's in the middle of throwing his head around and we actually stop, the wobble will keep on going and solve itself. Okay. So try this, Zach. If you go ahead and uh, reframe the alien up and let's try to rewind and just play it. And who knows, maybe perhaps the, uh, the playback won't be too bad. All right. People get a better <clears throat> sense for what the, the timing is, hopefully. Absolutely. Well, here we go. So he's doing his little thing. He hears something. He's like, huh? Wait a minute. And there he goes. Cool. Quick draw. So we will actually have Zach animate this thing live on this VTM so that our viewers out there new to animating can see how to go about animating a character in a sequence like this. All okay. right. So, Zach, if you could, go ahead and let's start out by having you explain what are constraints. Well, a constraint is a relationship between... The, uh, between two or more attributes on two objects, okay. where one object will be deriving its translation, rotation, or scale, or all three, from another object. Okay. So it's almost like a master-slave type scenario. Exactly. Okay, interesting. And uh, go ahead and go a little bit further. And we've got different types of constraints available in Motion Builder as well, right? Exactly. We've got three different kinds of constraints in Motion Builder. There's the simple constraint, a relations constraint, and an expression constraint. So uh, just to kind of overview, because I'm going to go into these in a lot more depth later on, a simple constraint is kind of a prefabricated constraint. These come with Motion Builder. You drag, and drop, you drag and drop them into your scene. Very cool. And they come with open slots available for you to drop objects into, and then you just activate them and you're ready to go. Excellent. Your relations constraint, they're going to allow you to take boxes in a relations pane. Now hang on just a second, and I'll actually demonstrate this, because it does get a little bit confusing. Change over my layout real quick. And under my constraints, I've actually got several in here, and they're organized into uh, various folders, which I will also demonstrate that as we go along. We'll actually sh open up the relations pane here, and you can see we have several boxes that are representing attributes, operators, if you will, 
in our scene, and we're connecting those together to form a constraint. So they're almost like little black boxes, except for their color gray, that <laughs> basically do some sort of calculation internally and then rather send information out, and they also receive information in that they work upon. Right. And, and then we connect these things together, up, uh, more or less almost like an electronic schematic, or for those out there that are familiar with schematic views or even the hypershade from Maya, very similar type approach. Exactly. All right, very nice. So, um, all right, let's see. What else? Oh, by the way, I, I go, we'll go ahead and say this because you, you mentioned the simple constraints, but then you moved on to showing a basic example of uh, the relations, relations here. But if you want to go ahead and show them real quick. It, Absolutely. It, uh, actually, you have several simple constraints available inside of Motion Builder. Uh, inside your constraints folder, you have all of your constraints actually listed. Everything but the relations and the expressions are your simple constraints. For example, the three-point mapping, range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to add, just so that we don't go too deep in it, because that's the idea of all of these future lessons. But the idea, of course, with these simple constraints is that they are just a matter of drag and drop. And then there you go. Exactly. And well, here this is a, this is a simple constraint box right here. Exactly. Then you're left with the parameters to fill in what objects are going to be involved. Exactly. Okay. So it's very simple stuff. Okay. So back to the constraints. So so far you've talked about there being simple constraints, then there's the relations, and then there is there is expression constraints. Now I don't really have any of these in my in my scene here, but let me go ahead and drag one in. Just drag and drop, and I get one down here in my in my constraints. I'll just double click it. And here's what we get. We get the expression spreadsheet. What this is going to allow us to do is to create animation based off an actual spreadsheet layout, where we will have a sender cell, we'll have a mathematic operation cell, and a receiver cell. And once again, I'll go into more depth on that when we actually get to that section of the VTM. All right. Okay, so it sounds good. So this is what we're going to be taking a look at. Now, let me go ahead and say this. We're going to be considering this constraints number one, and the reason is... Basically, there's a lot of stuff that we can get into in regards of more complex expressions and relation setups as well, or relation networks. And it would be kind of difficult to cover all of the different box types available uh, in regards to relations here. So we'll be looking at, at that in another VTM a little bit later. But in this one, we wanted to go ahead and show you guys how we could get moving with object interaction with our characters. Absolutely. We want to get you guys comfortable with constraints before we get really deep into them. Exactly. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right.